morning students today we are going to have uh, bypass technology lecture this is the third lecture solid state fermentation the solid state fermentation involves the growth of microorganisms on moist particles of solid materials in beds okay which is uh, okay useful for the production of all the valuable materials including the enzymes or uh, okay or my including the microorganisms so the spaces between the particles are filled with a continuous gas phase okay that is uh, involved in the supply of oxygen okay to the microorganisms so the definition of uh, solid state fermentation involves okay the growth of microorganisms on moist particles of solid materials in beds okay usually the solid materials are okay soaked with water or mixed with the nutrients and it may be layered okay completely in the form of beds and in which the spaces between the particles if you are seeing it okay, into it okay maybe by using the microscope we can see some gaps okay in between the particles uh, that is filled with the continuous gas phase so that will provide the oxygen supply okay to the microorganisms it should be noted that uh, the word fermentation in terms of solid set fermentation okay usually are uh, used in the broader sense of any controlled <coughs> microbial process and does not imply the microorganism is using the fermentative metabolic pathways so the solid cell fermentation is nothing but is usually uh, usually okay, in the broader sense okay this any controlled microbial process for the production of any valuables a typical bioreactor okay that is uh, so a typical bioreactor for solid cell fermentation will involve the three phases okay one is the body of the bioreactor itself and the bulk gas phase so just now i told okay the gas phase means uh, between the solid particles and third one is the substrate bed so these are the three different uh, the typical bioreactors okay for solid state fermentation that is having three different phases for example a typical bioreactor used for the solid state fermentation having three different phases one is the body that is the bioreactor itself okay the vessel number two is bulk gas phase okay so that is uh, referred okay previously that is uh, the spaces between the solid particles and the substrate bed the substrate involved usually we can we are using going to use a substrate a material and the substrate material is soaked with uh, or otherwise uh, Uh, sprinkled with uh, the nutrient uh, materials and the moist one that is layered on a stainless steel plate and after that the the complete okay the tray can be uh, uh, completely sterilized by autoclaving and after autoclaving just we can inoculate the microorganism of our interest okay to grow it to produce our uh, the product of interest the substrate bed itself okay, can be Part of as con consisting of uh, two substrates, that means the substrate, namely the particles of solid material to which the growing microorganism is attached. And number two is interparticle gases. Okay, this is the two different uh, segments, uh, two different substrates. Okay, of uh, the substrate bed. In this slide, okay, we can have the basic idea about so what is a solid state. ferment the phases within the solid state fermentation system the number a that is so this diagram the diagram number a the appearance of the system at the macro molecular scale that means the if you are seeing by naked eye okay this will be like this and at this scale okay it is possible to uh, discern the substrate bed the head space above the bed and the wall of the bioreactor so the wall of the bioreactor and uh, this is the bed of the solid particle solid particle means substrate particles are uh, packed okay within the uh, vessel so this is the bioreactor wall okay usually this is made up of stainless steel and the head space head space will okay, be used for the ventilation or otherwise the supply of gas or the free uh, area okay to interact with the uh, gas space next one is b the appearance of an inoculated substrate at the microscope for example if you are seeing uh, uh, a particular a particle with okay, a substrate particle okay by using the microscope so you can see like this okay, that is the moist the solid particle and 
So this space around uh, the particle, okay, it's called this inter-particle gas space. Okay, now this is ready for uh, the formation, okay, of the re ready for inoculation of Michael Gansons. And at this scale, okay, it is possible to discern the individual particles and the gas space between them. And the growth, number C, is the growth of a biofilm, okay, of a unicellular organism, either bacteria or yeast or, okay, the fungi. Okay, so the fungal hyphae it is different, but for first we can uh, have a look about uh, bacteria and yeast. The first one, okay, this is C, is in the overall view of uh, the particle, mass, solid particle, and uh, coated with a biofilm. Usually the biofilm is nothing but uh, it is a uh, the complete uh, layer of uh, microorganisms, okay, completely coating and forming is a biofilm. So next one is uh, D. So, D is nothing but growth of a network of uh, fungal hyphae. If you are using the, your organism as a fungus, so it will form like this. That means uh, the complete, uh, the solid, uh, uh, moist bead or otherwise the particles completely coated with uh, the hyphae, the fungal hyphae. And this network uh, grows across the surface and while some hyphae penetrate into the substrate and others extend into the spaces between the particles, either the penetration or otherwise sometimes okay that may grow very fast on the surface itself. So this is the overall uh, the outline of uh, how the fermenter vessel will be and how it is uh, the, may be used for the, the cultivation of uh, uh, bacteria and yeast at the same time okay maybe for the fungus that is uh, uh, fungus uh, growth of fungus. Next, coming to the third slide, so that is uh, microorganisms used in solid state fermentation process. The majority of the solid state processes uh, that have been investigated to date involve the filamentous fungi. Usually, the filamentous fungi is involved, okay, much when compared to bacteria or yeast. Although there are some processes, okay, that involve either bacteria or yeast. So, what are the possibilities? The first one, the majority one, the commonly used one, the filamentous fungi. And other options are bacteria or yeast. It is likely that the processes involving filamentous fungi will continue to dominate. So, this processes of uh, solid state fermentation, the majority of uh, the fermentation process used for the cultivation of fungus, especially filamentous fungi. We can classify this solid state fermentation uh, uh, of uh, bioreactors. The first one, the bioreactors in which the substrate bed is not forcefully aerated and either remain static, so during the whole fermentation period, or is agitated very infrequently. Okay, this type is called as group 1, that is the tray bioreactor. The first one is tray bioreactor. Okay, it's nothing but it is a tray, simple. The bioreactors in which the substrate bed is not forcefully aerated. So it is not uh, aerated by using a fan or otherwise uh, some blower. So nothing is used, and either remains static. Either it is static, so during the whole fermentation period, or is agitated very infrequently. It is not agitated, or otherwise okay, very rarely, or otherwise before starting the inoculation process, it may be agitated, or otherwise after the inoculation, after the growth of uh, the complete fermentation, so this may be agitated. That's all. This is a very simple type, okay. This type is called as group one, so that is named as tray bioreactor. Group number two is the bioreactors in which the substrate bed is forcefully aerated. So, this aeration process is completely forcefully aerated, but the bed either remains static, so during the whole fermentation period, and is agitated very infrequently. So, this type is called as packed bed bioreactor. So, this packed bed means the bioreactors in which the substrate bed is forcefully aerated. So, this air is passed okay, through the uh, bed, packed bed, and the agitation is not a continuous process, it is very rarely or very, very rarely agitated. So, this type is called as the packed bed bioreactor, and this comes under group 2. So, group 2 is nothing. Nothing but okay, the group 2 packed bed bioreactor. And the group 3 is the bioreactors in which the substrate bed is not forcefully aerated, in which 
the air being introduced into the bioreactor so in the head space above the bed but the bed is agitated either continuously or very frequently so this type is called as group 3 that is a rotating drum or stirred drum bioreactors so here what is happening the aeration is not the forcefully aerated that means the air is simply passed the soil and at the same time the base so that means the bed is completely agitated okay either continuously or very frequently so this will facilitate the formation of uh, uh, this air uh, okay the supply okay to the in between the the bead surface so this type is called as group 3 that is the rotating drum and the set drum bioreactor group number 4 the bioreactors in which the bed is not a fully not only forcefully aerated but also agitated either continuously or very frequently so this type is very peculiar so the various designs are possible for this type of bioreactor and it is very difficult to identify the single type okay that is so here the bioreactors in which the bed is not fully forcefully aerated so uh, it is not completely or forcefully aerated but is also agitated either continuously or very frequently so the difference between the first one and sorry group 3 and group 4 for example group 3 is the substrate bed is not forcefully aerated both are same okay that one and this one okay and the uh, the, the air is being introduced into the bioreactor in the head space f of the above the bed but the bed is agitated okay and uh, this one but uh, the agitated either continuously or very frequently the only minute difference is the air is passed only to the head space. So here the head space is not clearly defined here because it depends on the type of the bioreactor. So the difference between the group 3 and group 4, the head space, the air is applied to the head space. So that is a, this point is very important. That is the only difference between group 3 and group 4. I hope you understood. So next one, we can go with one by one. The first one is uh, group A, oh, sorry, the, the group 1 is uh, tray type bioreactor. A tray type bioreactor consists of a chamber, so which may be an incubator or a room, a completely closed one, in which the temperature or uh, temperature and the humidity are controlled to some degree of extent, uh, and in which the various recipients containing solid state, uh, solid substrate are placed. It's very simple. So, for example, we can place the solid substrate on a stainless steel tray and that is placed in a room or there is a chamber okay, that is also made up of stainless steel and to that we can pass the air that's all. So, this process is very simple and very cost effective, very economical and some of the fermented foods, okay, like a very traditional fermented foods such as temp and Indonesian uh, a fermented food based on the fermentation of soybeans, okay, with the, the filamentous fungus, okay, that is ripose or rhizophus, or the koji step of uh, soy sauce production. So, this type is very common, very commonly used for the production of very traditional foods. It's very economical and very cost effective. And still, okay, they are using in Indonesia and in China also, okay, they are using the same type of uh, the tray type bioreactor for the fermentation of soybean and also soy sauce production. The tray bioreactors tend to be uh, relatively labor intensive, okay, since each individual bioreactor needs to be handled, loaded, mixed, unloaded separately because, so this is a very ordinary method, this needs some manpower, okay, to clean the trays or load the trays or, okay, the fixing the tray, okay, within the chamber, so everything, the manpower is required, that is why the labor intensive, more labors are required. However, the product is of sufficiently high value, then the tray uh, bioreactors can be profitable at a larger scale, and even in facilities like, uh, okay, the several tons of substrates okay, can be produced per day. Because it's very cheap, because there is no further investment. It's only the manpower is required. That's all. So no need of uh, the passing the air. Only the passing the air is okay. But uh, no, the blowing the air or the mixing, the agitation, okay, nothing is required okay, for this. 
the trade of bilaterals are very simple and very economical and highly cost effective okay this is a model of uh, trade type bilateral so i said okay the stainless steel trays are uh, placed okay within the chamber this chamber is air okay that is air is passed okay through this the fresh air okay the controlled temperature and humidity because so this one okay is completely filtered and that is passed okay into it and the same air the hot air or otherwise and they are used to okay after the fermentation process that may be coming out that may be mixed with the, the fresh air so the positioning and the spacing of trays and the positioning and the design of air circulation equipment will determine how efficiently the air is circulated around the surface of the trays so this is very simple i said it is a stainless steel tray that's all okay so stainless steel trays means okay this is a perforated uh, bottom okay and the thin layer of the substrate okay, can be placed and uh, either okay this may be there okay this is a base and thin layer of substrate and a cover either this type or this type can be used okay the basic features of tray bioreactor system the bioreactor itself is a chamber in which the temperature and humidity of the air are controlled temperature is very important temperature can be controlled okay by heating coils and the air is passed the conductivity of heat to okay, only through the air and uh, the thermostat is placed for example if you want to maintain 37 degree c so that will maintain exactly 37 degree c if it is reduced or increased so based on that a fresh air will be introduced if it is reduced or increased if it is uh, okay if it is uh, very less okay maybe the heat of the air okay can be passed and the trays containing thin layers of substrate are stacked with the fermenter so on the left it is a stack of uncovered trays okay this one is uncovered trays that is perforated perforated means a small pores on the trays bottom and above okay a layer of uh, substrate can be placed second one is so this type is it is not perforated it is a ordinary a stainless steel tray and the layer of substrate is placed and after that the cover is placed so these are the two different types so based on the application so we can choose any one of the type whether it is to be covered or not to be covered so based on that number 2 that is a group 2 okay that is a packed bed bioreactor so this this one is also very common and traditionally the packed bed bioreactors involve a static bed of the substrate a static bed means the substrate is it is not moved or otherwise agitated the static bed that sits on a perforated base through the through which the air is blown forcefully so i'll show the diagram based on that you can understand the basic features of uh, packed bed bioreactor in this case uh, the remaining bioreactor diagrams the particle size are somewhat uh, exaggerated okay in uh, the reaction to the in relation to the bioreactor this is the air box through that the air is passed okay by a filter and there is a perforated base that is a, the porous base through that the same air is uplifted okay to the vessel and uh, this is the stainless steel vessel okay that is uh, placed okay on the perforated gas plate and within the vessel somewhat okay this uh, substrate is placed all the substrates is porous that means okay this may have some spaces in between okay uh, that the air is passed okay through that so the substrate is completely aerated okay that is supplied with oxygen that means air so very simple so go into the previous slide we yeah, are small scale packed bed bioreactors have a special importance in the laboratory scale studies that is ssf solid state formation uh, so this uh, so reinbold uh, column bioreactor is a system that contains multiple packed bioreactors multiple packed bed bioreactors each typically around 4 cm in diameter and 20 cm height 4 cm diameter and 20 cm height so this is stacked one maybe so we can stack one on the other and so that is completely packed so multi packed bed bioreactor the system is useful for characterizing oxygen uptake rate and as an oxygen analyzer okay can be placed on the 
the fermented vessel that analyzes okay, how much of oxygen is uh, coming out and what is the oxygen is going inside. So the DO probes okay, can be used to analyze okay, how much amount of oxygen is going inside and how much amount is coming back. Okay, that is uh, uh, exhausted. Okay, as an exhaust. So this is a diagram for that. So now coming to the third one, that is uh, so third one is rotating drum. So group three, rotating drum by reactor. So this is in a, nothing but a stainless steel drum with this like baffles. So the basic features of rotating drum and the steel drum by reactors. So the A means a rotating drum and B means Still, the drum by reactor. So, this is rotating. Drum is rotating and still the drum. The difference is the first one is the drum is rotating and the second one is so drum is static inside the rotator or agitator can be placed. Okay, a slow agitator will mix the beads completely. This is very simple. You can see here, here this arrow mark. Represents the complete rotation of the drum. If it is rotating, okay, these beads will go to here and also here and also here. So completely aerated because the air is okay, little so pass inside and comes outside. Okay, and second one is this one is a center that is a shaft that is attached. A shaft is attached with the baffles or type of uh, rotating. Uh, Paddles are placed, and these paddles are attached with the shaft, and the shaft is rotating because it is attached with the motor. So, if it is rotating, means it will automatically mix the contents. Okay, and the possibility of completely mixing and the, and the air supply, or uh, the possibility of the entry of air into the uh, that is beads. So, this is type three. It is not mentioned. Okay, so type three. This is type three, group three. Either rotating drum, here it is mentioned rotating drum and the steroid drum by reactors. Both are comes under group 3 rotating drum and steroid drum by reactors. Fourth one is forcefully aerated agitated by reactors. So, this forcefully aerated and agitated means there is no clear definition for this. So, both okay, and you can pass the air very forcefully and you can. Agitate the by reactor. So, this is the fourth type. So, group four. So, this is the type. And to understand the concept, okay, we can uh, explain with an example. So, this forcefully aerated and intermittently agitated by reactor. And uh, this one is an air box. So, this is a complete setup, it is completely packed. To understand the concept or understand the mechanism, this is expanded. Actually, all the three, okay, the top, the middle, and the base are all completely attached one. Okay, to enable you to understand the concept or the mechanism, it is expanded. Okay, so the bottom is the air box, so through that, okay, air is passed. And so the above the air box, okay, the perforated base plate, a stainless steel plate is placed, and above that, the top box is placed. The top box is attached with yeah, a box okay containing a small uh, uh, area okay for attachment of a small mixing blades. So these mixing blades can be inserted okay after packing the material that is the packing the beads or otherwise uh, the solid substrate okay within the, the top plate. So this top plate or top box is stainless steel box completely covered with uh, that material. Okay, the solid substrate material, and uh, through the uh, the pores we can insert okay all the three okay the mixing blade okay, number one, number two, number three. All the three can be inserted okay through this, and this one will move horizontally. Maybe it will be uh, starting okay maybe here, but slowly this will rotate. This can rotate. At the same time, okay, this may be moving slowly, okay, to this area. And again, after reaching this point, again, that will come back. Okay, after reaching this place, again, that will go. So, now what is happening? So, the air is also forcefully 
past at the same time so this media that is solid substrate media is also mixed forcefully so that is why it is called as forcefully aerated and forcefully agitated so here the mixing process is not uh, continuous if you want you can mix it or otherwise okay maybe you can decide the type of mixing so that is why it is called as intermittently that is occasion for example if it is really needed you can use the horizontal one or otherwise the first one okay can be used so this is the the group 4 that is forcefully aerated and forcefully agitated bioreactors okay a yeah, bioreactor with a capacity of around 1 ton of the substrate was developed at the institute of uh, uh, in re institute at trans the bioreactor has a design typical of packed bed bioreactor except the bed is mixed by a set of screws mounted on the carriage that sits on the rail and above the bed that it moves horizontally continuously from one end to another end so just now i explained okay this is the type so this one will move horizontally at the same time so these crew type uh, mixing blades will mix it in inside so so vertical mixing and also horizontal mixing is also possible so this is a very famous type and uh, so that's all about all the uh, solid state fermentation processes as we learned okay already the, there are four different types of uh, solid state fermentation number 1 group 1 group 2 group 3 and group 4 so all the uh, four different types of solid state fermentation is over and if you have any doubts you can raise the questions maybe after the session thank you